Yo, what is up guys? Delboy here, aka Blue Collar Sports TV. Hopefully you guys are doing well. If you're new here, smash that like, hit subscribe, all of that good stuff. So this video is a quick preview and prediction for Anthony Joshua versus Otto Varlin. This fight headlines the card in Saudi Arabia on the 23rd of December. In the UK it's pay-per-view on both DAZN and BT Sports or TNT Sports now. And yeah, this is the main event, and I think there is some intrigue there, there's no doubt about it stylistically, when it comes to this fight. But that of course is depending on whether this fight is actually real, whether Otto Varlin comes to win. That's going to be the question here, and the reason I bring that up, and when this card was first announced, I was actually quite excited, but the more I thought about it, the more it set in. I do, I am sceptical on a couple of fights on this card, mainly Anthony Joshua vs Otto Varlin and Deontay Wilder vs Joseph Parker because ultimately we know what the goal is. The goal is to get these two guys to fight each other, Wilder and Joshua. And of course, for that to happen, neither Parker nor Varlin can stand in the way. So when things like that occur, it always makes me a little sceptical to be honest, but let's assume it's going to be a real fight. And if it is, I think it's relatively interesting. I still make Joshua a favourite here, but it's an interesting fight in my opinion. Let's break down the tale of the tape. Anthony Joshua has a record of 26 wins, 3 defeats, 23 of his 26 wins coming by way of knockout. Otto Varlin has a record of 26 wins, 1 defeat, 14 of his 26 coming by way of knockout. So looking at the tail of the tape, and just using your eyes, Anthony Joshua is clearly the harder puncher here. And that's certainly a big advantage, especially at heavyweight. Anthony Joshua is listed as 6 foot 6, with an 82 inch reach, whereas Otto Varlin is listed as 6 foot 5 and a half, with a 78 inch reach. So Joshua is slightly taller, but he does have a 4 inch reach advantage, which again could be significant. Anthony Joshua is 34 years old, Otto Valin is 33 years old, so both guys are a similar age, and I think physically both guys are still in a really good position. I know, I know there is a question mark over Anthony Joshua's mentality, but physically I think he's fine. Both guys are still pretty fresh in my opinion. And of course Anthony Joshua is orthodox, whereas Otto Valin is a southpaw, and that's where the intrigue comes for a lot of people here, is the southpaw aspect of Otto Varlin. Of course, when Joshua last fought a southpaw, it didn't go too well against Oleksandr Usyk. He lost both of those fights quite clearly, in my opinion. Um, but Otto Varlin is no Oleksandr Usyk. He's not as mobile as Usyk. He's not as quick as Usyk. But he is bigger and taller. I'd say he's more physically robust. He's stronger. Um, you know, like in the clinch and things like that. So yeah, Valin isn't as good as Usyk, we get that, but he does bring um, some attributes that could be interesting. The southpaw stance, the fact that he can box and move, he can be cagey, he does like to engage in point scoring type fights. He brings some interesting attributes to the table, and outside of Alexander Usyk, Otto Valin is the best southpaw Joshua has fought. Uh, Charles Martin, I understand he was a world champion, but listen, sometimes these belts get passed around like cheap whores. Uh, Charles Martin was one of the weakest heavyweight champions of all time, in my opinion. I think Varlin is more skilled. Um, but regardless, let's break down what each guy should do, in my opinion, and then at the end, I will, uh, I'll, I'll make my pick. I think for Anthony Joshua, he has a very unique opportunity here, a really good opportunity to impress. Of course, Otto Valin's other big fight in his career was against Tyson Fury, and he went the distance with Tyson Fury, cut Tyson Fury, gave Tyson Fury a lot of issues, hurt him in round 12. He gave Tyson Fury a really good fight, and Tyson Fury struggled in that bout. Anthony Joshua doesn't have to blow Otto Valin out in a few rounds to make a statement. He could have a relatively competitive fight with Valin, and then maybe get a late stoppage, that would still be a statement if you're, com if you're comparing Joshua to Tyson Fury. He just has to do better than Fury. That's all he has to do. And I think Fury was particularly bad that night, so 
I think the scope is there for Joshua to make a statement here. Because again, if you're comparing him to, to uh, Tyson Fury and his performance against Varlene, it shouldn't be too hard to beat. I know maybe some will say I'm underrating Varlene. Maybe. I've never really been that high on Varlene, as you guys know. I think he's okay. You know, I think he's solid, but... That's all I see with Otto Valin. I, I, I see a solid, upper European level fighter, fringe world level fighter. I don't see a world class heavyweight in Otto Valin. I think he's too passive. I don't think he hits hard enough. I don't think he takes the initiative enough. He's just a good boxer, that's really it. And for me, Joshua needs to go in this fight and really take the ball by the horns from early really not be reckless not be not be super aggressive but really be sitting down on his punches from round one uh adopt that boxer puncher style try to try to hold center ring try to get that that uh lead foot on the outside of otto varlin's foot try to neutralize that south poor advantage early on pound that jab fire that jab hard jab but also fire the straight right hand behind it but importantly don't just don't just lead off with a jab. I want to see Joshua lead with a straight right hand against the southpaw. I think that shot could be quite effective uh, against Otto Valin. Uh, nobody's really tried it against him if you watch his fights back. And I actually think he's relatively open for that shot. And we know Joshua can throw that, that lead straight right hand. I actually think that could be a really good punch for Anthony Joshua in this fight. But obviously, before that, he needs to get his foot positioning right against the southpaw. Um, and try to disguise it, obviously, with the jab, um, faint the jab, maybe faint the jab to the body, then come over the top with the uh, straight right hand, things like that. Disguise it, mix your looks up, mix, you know, change the setups, change the approach. But I think that shot could be really effective at catching Otto Valin and throwing him off his game. Aside from that, again, I want to see Joshua be the boxer puncher. I want to see him reject the lead hand control game with Otto Valin, and and essentially try to slowly walk through him. That's what I want to see from AJ in this fight. Be more aggressive. I want him to be more assertive in his approach. I don't want to see him prod and probe with Otto Valin. You know, play that lead hand game and all that nonsense. That's Valin's game. That's what Valin is going to want here. He's going to want a slow contest where he can where he can um. Flick and probe, probe with his lead hand. He can move around. He wants that sort of chess match. Don't give it to Varlin. Don't go in there worrying about his power. Don't go in there trying to outbox him. I'm not saying be super reckless or make stupid choices. But just maintain range. Keep your guard up. Hard jab, straight right hand, lead right hand. And then slowly start to eke on for pressure. I want to see Joshua punching with purpose. And maybe as the fight plays out. Then start to get more expansive with the offense. Start implementing that left hook uh, into the game plan. Um, left hook to the side of the body, left hook to head. Slowly go through the gears and 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 put it on Valine. I think Joshua can take a few more liberties with this one because Valine isn't a big puncher. And yeah, I I want to see Joshua be more aggressive. Essentially, I want to see him be more aggressive, less living inside his own head. Less trying to be this pretty tit-for-tat boxer. Go back to being a boxer puncher and um, try to get that, that uh, lead foot positioning. Try to hold center ring. Make the most of that reach advantage and fire those straight power shots down the middle against the southpaw and then slowly start to apply pressure. As for Otto Valin, I actually think he's up against it in this fight. Uh, number one, Joshua's a bigger man. He's a stronger man. He's a faster man, and he punches harder, and quite frankly, I think Joshua is better. But also, Valin is, um, he's the B-side here. We, we made a reference to that at the start of this video. He's the B-side here. They want Joshua to win so that he can fight Wilder. So, this little tit-for-tat boxing style that he likes, the, the jab, the half-step back, the jab, the half-step back, uh, quick one-two, half-step back, circle out. I don't think that's going to be enough in this fight, even if he makes the distance and makes it somewhat close. Let's say most of us thinks he wins 7-5. I doubt he gets the decision. Varlin himself is going to have to be more aggressive here. I think he's going to... Listen, Varlin isn't an aggressive fighter per se, but 
he can throw combinations. He can rattle off uh, three, four punch combinations like jab, straight left hand, right hook, uh, things like that. Maybe he could throw the one, two, one, two. You know, he needs to implement more combinations in this fight. Yeah, he's got a point scoring style, but the way he usually deploys it, I, I don't think it's going to work here. One jab at a time or, or a few jab straight left hands here and there while boxing relatively well isn't going to be enough. So, listen, still play that boxer role, but try to up the output, try to throw in combination, try to fight in bursts, in ambushes almost, so to speak. Try to get that right hook into play. Uh, throw more punches, up the volume, up the work rate. Also, I'd like to see Varlene actually sit down on some more of his punches, try to get the respect of Joshua. Again, people question Joshua's mindset right now. They question his confidence. Varlene isn't a big puncher by heavyweight standards, but he usually weighs in at the low, two, oh, the, sorry, the low 240s, high 230s. So if he sits down on a shot, it's going to have some power. He needs, to be, he needs to be sitting down on that straight left hand more than he's used to doing in this fight. He needs to be trying to fire that through the guard of Joshua, trying to, trying to stop Joshua in his tracks, making Joshua reset, making Joshua uh, rethink walking through him. He needs to be more, like I said about Joshua, I think Valin needs, needs to be more assertive in this fight. He needs to be a little more, um, he needs to be a little more focused on offense here than he usually is. And A, that's going to mean throwing more shots, you know, trying to up that point scoring style, trying to throw more punches. But also, he needs to try to be more of a puncher in this fight. He needs to be. He needs to try and be more of a puncher. Um, yeah, you know Joshua's chin. It's not. It's not as terrible as people make out, but he can be hurt. Usyk did hurt Joshua, and Usyk's not a big heavyweight, as we know. Does Valine hit that much less than Usyk in terms of power? Probably not. I'd say it's comparable, actually. So yeah, try to try to sit down on some punches and um, surprise Joshua. You know. Do I have faith in Valine doing that? Probably not, to be honest. I think he'll revert to type. But we'll see. Maybe I'll be surprised. Maybe I'll be surprised. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a fight in which I can see Valine giving Joshua trouble. But I can't see him ever being at risk of winning this fight. It's one of those ones, uh, to be honest. So if I were to predict this fight, I'm picking Joshua... The only real thing for me is what method he does it in. Will it be a 12-round decision? Or can Joshua get the stoppage? If he gets the stoppage, I think it will be late. I think Valin does have a pretty good chin from what I've seen. He takes a shot pretty well. Plus, he looks after himself in there. I'm going to go a late stoppage, actually. I think Joshua is going to try to make a statement here. I think he'll try and make a statement. The last few fights, he's not been that impressive. I think he needs a statement. We, I feel like I've been saying that a lot recently with Joshua fights, but he needs a statement. So maybe this is the fight where he gets it. I'm going for a Anthony Joshua late stoppage here. What about you guys? How are you picking this fight? Share your thoughts below. Peace.